Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the 2 1 podcast. We just finished recording our 24 team uh, analysis playoff thingy. And now I'm back here, as always, with my favorite co host, Daniel the Manual. Hello. And Alex. <laughs> it's been too long, guys. <laughs> Daniel the Manual. Yeah. Did anyone in high school ever call you Daniel the Manual? No. Well, well it should be. Yeah. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Alex. I'll- <laughs> Pardon? Uh, okay, so before I'll get you a nickname too. Uh, we want to open the show. We're going to be talking about UFAs and RFAs for the class of 2020. Okay. But before we we started this episode, we were having a nice little talk about sport media and you know, um, just you know, just where it's it's gone the last few years. And I, I was going to ask Daniel, Daniel, do you remember how this podcast started? And it was that we, me and Alex, had asked you if you could meet us in the van at Ryerson. Which is a little room in the RCC, and so here and Alex can't remember this either. So, one of our it's a podcast we reference many a times called Thirty One Thoughts Sports Nets Jeff Merrick Elliot Friedman, and they had a live podcast. And so I won the contest entering in. I was one of you know a, you know lucky people that got to go, and you could bring a guest. And I was like, Yo, Alex, what up? It was during that weird time where Daniel was like never coming to class because he was sleeping in or something. So like yeah, I was coming to class, I would just uh, come in an well, hour I, I, into a, an hour in the, into a two-hour <laughs> class. Yeah, yeah. During the Sally class, it was really an hour recap of last week's class. Oh, so stop you, it! Stop. You missed, so you missed the recap of the part of the class you actually showed up. In all seriousness, Sally Goldberg pal is like so nice, but I. We treated it so badly. Anyway, yeah, we'll, I felt so, so bad. So anyway, so I I got to get you know thirty one thoughts live, and I and uh, I asked Alex, hey buddy, do you want to you know come with me? And I think I, I I skipped a history class to go see it, and uh, it's fine. I passed the class, no problem. Okay. And so it was fantastic. I remember me and Alex stopped at the door in the room, and we we legit. I think we pointed and looked at each other and said, "That's Jeff." <laughs> We we stopped. I think my I, my mouth dropped. I looked at Adam. Adam looked at me. It's like that's him. That, that's, that's the man. That's the guy. And we were so inspired. Out. I remember, like we even talked to Jeff and that and Elliot after. Like Elliot came by and shook everyone's hand because it was raining. It was just terrible. And like I remember just being like, "Hi, I love you." <laughs> Stop. Hi. 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 Right? And like we. <laughs> Talked about the like the second show we went to live with Josh when Dangle and and, and think you were there. That but anyways, was a funny story. He, yeah, so we we obviously you know that happens and and Alex was nice enough to pick me up because I was living downtown at Res at that time, and like we're on our way back to you know Alex is gonna go drop me off at Res and I I like we're just so inspired and, and we're like, let's start a podcast. Hey, let's start a podcast. Yeah. And we did, and uh, that's from there. Yeah. I think the the second time we went was even funnier. Because we we you call was it you called me or I called you? I called you being like, yo, I won and then you also won? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you go I go, so, you called me and I and you're like, What are you doing on Tuesday? And I go, Oh, you won the thing too. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, yeah, we God. brought Daniel that time, we brought Josh. I almost cried pouring my heart out to Steve Dangle about how much yeah. I loved him. Elliot Friedman room. Remembered your shoes, yeah. He or liked your shoes. He liked your shoes. Complimented them, yeah. And he remembered. He recognized you. Didn't really recognize me from the time before, but like, yeah. I got to hear Jeff Merrick swear because we were just we were just like talking, and he was so nice as Jeff Merrick. Such a nice guy. But yeah, that was like I know we've always made jokes of like Elliot Friedman, friend of the show, liked my shoes, remembered Alex. But just now the listeners have some some context. Yeah. What's actually going on? That's gonna be. I love the nostalgia. I love it. Yeah. It's man, it's only and that was what a year ago, Less almost a year. a year ago. Yeah, it was in the fall. Was it was like the beginning of the uh, fall semester. What the the one all four of us went to was then, yeah. And yeah, then the one yeah. second semester. Yeah, or Jesus second year. Christ, that was appearances. Pardon? Yeah, just very rare, like an eclipse when Daniel oh, yeah, was making yeah. guest appearances. Yeah. Remember, um, Jesus, uh, what what was it? Uh, never mind. I can't remember. I'm having bad memory loss. But we'll we'll get going here. We're gonna look at UFAs, RFAs, 
And guys, I think it's only fair. We're going to be looking at these guys. We're going to say, are they going to stay with their current team? Are they going to leave, look at potential teams, and maybe speculate about what a contract could look like? Uh, we're probably going to be a little off because there's a whole lot going on, but we'll we'll do it anyway, and we'll start with the yeah. UFA goalies. Sure. Okay. All right, Alex, why don't you start us off, and let's talk about Robin Leonard. Yeah. So Currently with Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, he's with the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, I think he's leaving. Um, I I have three teams listed uh, here that I think he could potentially uh, go to. I have him down for four years, $6 million. You know, he wants that long-term security. I think that was kind of an issue... Uh, with his contract last year, right, uh, signing that one-year five million dollar, uh, five million dollars. Sorry, my God, one-year five million dollars with the Chicago Blackhawks, which at the time even I thought was like this doesn't make sense to me. Um, then getting traded to Pittsburgh, um, to Toronto, then Toronto to Vegas because three-way trades. Absolutely love them. I think he's looking for that security. I think he'll get it from one of three teams. Uh, Carolina, who need a... I think that's one of their uh, holes. Uh, yeah. Is that goalie... You know, right now it's Mrazic and Reimer. Uh, yeah, they have Najelkovic. But uh, I think, you know, that's a guy they look at. And I think this is one of the big guys that Carolina does look at if they are going to sign a goalie. You know, looking at the other ones that we're going to talk about, I just don't think they match how Carolina thinks. Um, the second team is Calgary. That's another team. You know, Cam Tal- uh yeah, Cam Talbot was there this year on a one-year contract. They have a, obviously have David Riddick, but you know, Robin Leonard, David Riddick, and my last one is Colorado, and I have an asterisk beside Colorado because you know what are they doing? You know. It felt like Fran- Francouz kind of took over that starting position. Yeah, from Grubauer. Yeah, obviously Grubauer was injured, but even when he came back, it just felt like everyone was talking about Francouz. And then they signed him to a two year extension. You know, could they trade Grubauer? Yeah, they can, and they could probably get something for him, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel, who do you got going with Robin Leonard? Um, so I had two options. Uh, one is. Uh... I think Calgary, um, I kind of agree with Alex with that, where um, he's kind of like, I feel like he wants that security. He might be a missing piece of that, you know, up and coming team. So he could go there if he wants to compete. Uh, one, and it's something that I actually kind of found interesting where I'm like, what they would do here? Because, but you see a lot of teams try to do this when it comes to tandems. And I thought the San Jose Sharks, if he wants to stay in the West Coast, okay. Fair one, yeah. um, they have the money to kind of give him like a decent contract and you know martin jones has really not shown it the only problem is they signed him until 2024 so for like 5.7 million a year so that that's interesting but i think those are the two options if there is a team that's probably praying for those compliance products probably uh yeah i didn't think of san jose to be honest with you they weren't on my radar for a lot here uh for robin leonard yeah um I wouldn't be surprised if Vegas do take a run on trying to keep him, but I feel like Robin Leonard is probably going to leave Vegas. And I had the same kind of main two teams. That's obviously Calgary and Carolina. Focusing more on Carolina for me is just that I love James Reimer, like everyone does. Uh, But is he a starter? No. And the platoon system is becoming more and more of a thing. And Robin Leonard is shown to be a great goalie in uh, in that role. And, of course, I'm not someone who is quite confident in Peter Morazic either, and you don't quite know yet what you have in Alec Nadelovich, who right. listening to our old uh, trade deadline video, I remember how to pronounce his name. Uh, we'll go to a goalie who's about two years older, and we'll start with Jacob Markstrom. Daniel, what do you have going on with uh, the Swedish goaltender? Um, either he you know, goes with the flow with what the Canucks are trying to build, and resigns there, I think, or they this team swings for the fences and gives them what he really wants in terms of market value, and that's New Jersey Devils. Uh, you know? By the way, I, I just realized we forgot uh, Leonard. I, by the way, could think like three or four years, and I, I'd see like 
five million around the Kemper price. Sorry, continue, Daniel. No problem. <laughs> the, the contract details. Oh yes, contract details. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, five or six million. I agree. Um, same thing with Jacob Markstrom. I think if he goes for the five or six per year, he's gonna go for term, and I think that's what New Jersey kind of wants to give him, unless they truly believe Mackenzie Blackwood could play like sixty games a season. Um, he showed the flashes he could, but I think that's something that you could kind of do where y- you have like this weird combination of players, like young and, you know, in their prime or, you know, someone who's trying to reestablish it, like we said, P.K. Subban. So I think that's some one that they kind of look towards. Yep. Yeah, oh. I have I have him staying um, with Vancouver. I have him staying actually for six years. Uh, at seven million dollars. Really? And I'll tell you why. You know, they've been trying to do the have this Thatcher Demko experiment, and I don't know if they liked what they saw necessarily uh, this year. Because when when he was put into a situation where he had to be the number one guy, it didn't seem like he looked comfortable in there. No. Um, and yes, there's a lot of goalies on the market, uh, and, and we're going to get to a couple after this as well, but I don't think there's one who kind of helps with that platoon system for Vancouver. And, and I think Vancouver, you know, maybe in two years time, I think this deal, like one of Thatcher Demko or Markstrom does get picked up by Seattle. And I think Vancouver has to be okay with one of them being taken. And I think Markstrom has really performed. Like, you're looking at the last two years. He he was 28, 23, and 9, 9, 12 save percentage. This year, 23, 16, and 4, and a 9, 18. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's proven himself, proven himself, even though the team in front of him isn't always necessarily the best. That is very true. Uh, that God, Vancouver. I, I would really like him to leave Vancouver, um, but man, does it feel like that's a that's a player that they can't really afford to lose because Demko is yeah he's a young goalie, but you can just never tell with them. So and he's he's obviously not ready. So I would I had him unfortunately at the end of the day staying with Vancouver, but I went a bit more like. Uh, for a lot of these goalies, I went with the kind of well, no, just Markstrom and Leonard. I went with the whole framework of the Kemper deal, so around like four point five five, because I think that was around the report. Friedman said a couple. Uh, yeah, it was around the trade one too. I thought he but, rejected uh, that deal. Yes, but I mean, with the uncertainty around the league, I don't yeah. think it would be the worst I know. surprise to. And um, but yeah, but if he, if he did hit free agency, and you're gonna hear this a lot from me, uh, I think. Calgary are getting a bit sick of what's going on there, and I think if they're going to make a big splash with trading the core piece, which we've heard of, um, also I think they would take a good run at a Markstrom or a Leonard as well. Um, we're going to Braden Holtby, and this is a guy that I think is the next goalie to get a stupid, massive, bloated deal, yeah. and again, yeah. I hate to keep repeating myself, but I think the Flames are the perfect team to do it. <laughs> I have two teams in mind. Actually, one is the Flames. The other one, the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, both their goalies are UFAs, aren't they? Um, I, I, I'll double check that, but I, I just think that is their one of their main issues. You know, you you go on a ten game win streak. Uh, sorry, Linus Allmark is an RFA, and Carter Hunnan will be a UFA next year. Their biggest oh. issue I felt this year was other than consistency, was their goaltending. You go on a 10-game winning streak. You go on a crazy win streak, and then you, you crap the bed. Mm-hmm. And and I see them just throwing out stupid money at, at uh, Brain Holby. I have him at eight years, or seven years, sorry. I don't know why I put eight. Seven years, $9 million. Okay. Fair enough. Daniel? Okay, yeah, this one's pretty funny. When you said, like, this is a prime example of someone getting stupid money, um, I'm going to go with, and you talked about how he's on the other side of 30. Um, you know, this this to me is a Minnesota Wild <laughs> contract really? right here. Okay. Yes, like Miko 
Miko Koivu and Alex Galchenyak are both they're they're gone next year, I think. You know, that frees up like ten million dollars for them. And they're gonna give Braden Holtby the money. Like Devin Dubnik has one more year. Yeah. He's already thirty four. And this is a team where like I feel like in their heart they wanna rebuild, but they simply cannot. <laughs> uh Oh, I love you, Daniel. <laughs> I, I had a Minnesota dumb signing a little later on, but um, man. Uh, sorry, Alex, you did give us Holpy, right? Yes, I did. I don't want to make the mistake I have been at the drafts and skipping no. you guys, so I'm going to erase this on my notes. And we'll go to a guy who Daniel is, I think, the perfect backup slash B goaltender. That's Anton Kudobin. Current, by the way, Holpy, if you didn't know. Washington Capitals, Anton Kudobin currently with the Dallas Stars and arguably one of the best goaltending duos with Benjamin Bishop. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. What happens with Anton Kudobin? I think two possibilities. Uh, I guess where he is in terms of his age, he and he wants to win, he signs He signs with Dallas. But if he feels like he could be in like that tandem type kind of thing and play a lot, I think he goes to Chicago Blackhawks because mm -hmm. beyond Corey Crawford, they have nothing, I yeah. think. That's true. Um, That's true. He, he knows he's going to go to a team that can play, and, you know, the Blackhawks, they're going to just, you know, they, 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 this sounds like a signing for them. It's another veteran, uh, like, middle-of-the-pack signing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have him staying in Dallas, and, you know, I think it's really worked well for Dallas the last couple of years, him, Ben Bishop, and, uh, and Tom Hudobin. And I'm I, I'm just giving him the the same contract that the Bruins gave Yaroslav Halak one year two and a half million, and you know it's just absolutely full of bonuses. That's very fair. Um, I also have him staying, but if there is a chance he hits free agency, Montreal, give him a call, and sign him, please, so Carey Price can have some damn support because Lindgren is not good enough. Keith and Kate is not good enough, and Kate Primo is too young. Uh, so and, um, yeah, I was just yes. yeah, go. I'm gonna ask about the Russian goaltender either. And I, <laughs> we need to give him like three million. Give him three million. Get him on this team. Uh, Yaroslav Halak is two point two five, not two point five. My bad. But hey, he should get more than that. But hey, um, but yeah, he deserves he the best. Yeah, I think he's just turned thirty five, or he will during the deal. So that's yeah. the big. There. And yeah, we'll finish up the goaltenders, Alex. Corey Crawford and the Chicago Blackhawks. What happens with that relationship? Uh, I'm just thinking how stubborn the team is. I am going that Corey Crawford stays. Two year contract, four million dollars. Daniel. At this point in his career, I agree to Alex. Uh similar cap hit. He stays for Chicago simply because I don't think anyone except Chicago sees his value, to be honest, he, um, at, this, at, at this point. Sees yeah, his value as a starter. Yeah, but, like, the Blackhawks have no one else. Like like we said before, they have no one else. Chris D'Elia. Yeah. Not the or comedian. My, not the comedian, no. <laughs> not the one who was in you season it's, two. It's, it's Colin D'Elia, by the way. Colin D'Elia. Colin. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> now, well, you got to think about it. If I'm Corey Crawford, right, First of all, I don't think I have any sort of reasoning to want to leave. I've won so much here. I've made my money. I'm assuming he must like Chicago. He's even around there so long. Yeah. And Robin Leonard's gone. So, I mean, who else is my competition? And again, Malcolm as you, you get to say, Malcolm Subban. Malcolm Subban. Poor guy. I mean, like, what else? Yeah, what is the else is there for Chicago to have in the back of their net? And maybe they look at, like, Corey and they're Scott like, maybe Foster. he'll... Scott Foster. Also, a, a moment to spare for Corey Crawford because he's had some injury problems. But, like, that's a good goalie that I don't think ever really got his credit. Um, yeah. But we'll move on to the UFA skaters. And this is, of course, headed up by Alex Petrangelo. And I'll start with Alex here again. Where does Alex Petrangelo, the captain of the St. Louis Blues, the reigning defending Stanley Cup champions, what happens with him? Well, I think there's teams that definitely take a look at him. And, you know, there's all these rumors. Uh, I, to be honest, he's leaving. I'm sorry. I, I don't think they figure – I don't think St. Louis figures it out. I think that Marco Scandella signing – let me pull up their cap friendly here for a second. Yeah. You know, that Marco Scandella signing really sent a message. Uh, 
and, and that was the second message that was sent this season. The first one is when you bring in Justin Falk and sign him to a six and a half million dollar extension when you already have Alex Petrangelo and Colton Pareko, what does that tell you? It has it, it must tell someone something. You know, they also have to re sign Vince Dunn. That that's another guy. Um there's two contracts that, you know, I think could be either traded, compliance, but if there's going to be a compliance buyout, which we don't actually know yet. Um, in There's Jake Allen, who has uh, this season and next season at 4.35. And, and I think that's a little too much for what you're considering a backup goalie. Mm-hmm. They don't follow, they don't sit in that platoon system like other like other teams, I think Jordan Bennington is their starter. Um, and the other guy is Alex Steen. But that's your assistant captain. Right? And he makes 5.75 this year and next. They have... If the cap stays at 81.5, which I think it will. I don't think... I mean, I don't. what do I know? It could go down. But I think there'd be salary rollbacks. But... That's like it's fair guess. Two million mm-hmm. in cap space. That's two million in cap space. And then yeah, you have to get rid of those other deals. And I I don't know if I think you can definitely get rid of one of them. I don't know if you can get rid of both of them. I think it that's that's difficult to do. Well, you could like if you have to sweeten one of them. Even if there's not a compliance buyout, there is still the normal buyout period that you can. That's still an option for the Blues. Again, like if if it's going to be a little tight, right? I think if Kyle Connor's willing to take a bit of a haircut to try and fit Bufflin in Winnipeg, I think Petrangelo would be willing to try and take a haircut How to make it work. I don't know. That's that's the buzz question. Cut? No. <laughs> All right. Buzz cut. What do you think, Daniel and uh, and Petrangelo? Quickly, I don't know. It's like here go, and then we'll get into the other details there. Yeah, it's like interesting things that Alex kind of said about you know you bring in Justin Falk, you sign Marco Scandella to a contract. I feel he never he didn't deserve. <laughs> Take that back! He scored a big goal against the Leafs for the half. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, I don't know where St. Louis is kind of going with these things. They have a lot of guys they need to resign, so I think. If negotiations go well and he has a clear identity in what the team will well what he's gonna be like if he's gonna continue to have this identity going forward, then I think he takes a pay cut and signs with St. Louis. Mm-hmm. But I think if things don't go well after he give them a chance, he goes to UFA. Um I don't know, I had this I had this already for another player on this list, but it's Something I feel like the rate, like the Rangers would try to get. Son of a, of course you did. Like the um, New York Rangers. Just because I took it away from Alex there, uh, Alex, what would you say about a potential, if if, if indeed Petrangelo does leave? If he leaves, did- uh, I think you know we're looking at for sure he's going to get seven years, and, and and I really think he could get something close to ten million dollars. Yeah. I mean, He's Eric right. Carlson have secured that for him. Yeah. So. yeah, and yes, there's a pandemic, right? And there's your, there's your, there's your pay cut, ten million dollars from eleven. And, and, eleven point five. You know, I, I, I have up here. There's a couple guys. There's a couple teams. I put Toronto just to be a, to be an absolute <laughs> dick, because I know. Coming home. Because I know I love I'm a big homer here, um, but I, I really look at a team maybe like the Calgary Flames who might want to change some things up here. Um, I, I do have Calgary quite a bit on my list. Yeah, Sam. Um, you know, Brody's a UFA, Hamnick's a UFA. They got a couple other guys who are UFAs who's pro- who probably aren't coming back. Uh, you know, it seemed like Hannafin might get traded, which is a possibility. Um, there's a couple other guys, you know, they were talking about one of the big core pieces, which includes, I guess, Goudreau, Monaghan, uh, Backlund, Lindholm. One of them could get traded potentially. So that frees up even more cap space. And I think that's, I think they they make a bid for Alex Petrangelo. 
Yeah, uh, and Daniel, sorry, you were saying the Rangers. Any other team slash what kind of deal do you think Petrangelo would go for? I think they get the base. I don't know. This is like reminiscent of a lot of Ranger sightings, but you know, you give them that that ten and seven, um, and then it's the type of team where you know they had all those like top young guys coming up, but you know how the Rangers are; they're a bit impatient. They're gonna sign, make a big signing, and go. You know, we'll figure out the entry level expiring deals later on. Yeah, hey, they have they have the money, and they're a team that's not afraid to spend it. Yeah, yeah I, I ultimately, for the fun of it, have Petrangelo leaving. And man, it's a team that just don't want to admit they're bad, and they're gonna try everything to try and ruin it. The Chicago Blackhawks are signing Petrangelo to seven years at ten and a half. Let's go! Wow. Yeah. Do you know? I think if that happened, we would have to have an emergency podcast. Oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. <laughs> Like, it would I love it. It'd be hilarious. I think it's happening. That'd be insane. Insane yeah. in the membrane. Okay. Insane, I'm just... no insane <laughs> steel ball that Ryan Kessler has in his hip. Because oh. that it looked like something. All right, we'll move on. Wait. Yes. Okay. All three of us did that. Okay. Yes, we'll move yes. on to probably the biggest forward free agent, uh, Craig Smith. I'm kidding. It's Taylor Hall <sighs> with the Eric Coyote. And if, if there was anyone that we could 100% say is probably testing free agency, <laughs> it's Taylor Hall. Yeah. The question is who's going to spend the money and which European team will Darren Ferris threaten Taylor Hall to go <laughs> for not getting a big enough deal on free agency? Alex, we will start with you, so Taylor Hall. I, I really think I, – I have his stats up here. I, I really think this year was a bit of an off year for Taylor Hall. Obviously, he only put up 52 points in 65 games. The year before, he was on pace for over a point per game, I assume, before he got injured, only playing 33 games. And the year before that was the heart winner. Mm -hmm. So I still think that that means something uh, to a lot of GMs. So I have him at seven years, nine and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. I have three teams. I have Edmonton because I love chaos, and I think Edmonton would try to find a way to bring this man back to play with Connor McDavid. Uh, the Calgary Flames, who are looking to change things up. You know, you trade out a piece and you bring Taylor Hall in. And someone that was, uh, it was a team that he was rumored to go to in earlier this year, the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, it's so gross. Oh, my God. <laughs> the would be nasty. Yeah. Jesus. I don't want that to happen very much. What about you, Daniel? Where is Taylor uh, in mind? I have... Uh, you're going to laugh at this. I have the Montreal Canadiens. Let's go! Um, yeah. I think for so long... I mean, like, they have guys coming up, but for so long, they haven't had, like, that marquee forward that you're like, yeah, this is the guy. I think, you know, like... Maybe, exactly. maybe Nick Suzuki will become that for them later on. But as of right now, like I'm looking at their roster, and I think it's a great group of like quality forwards. But like they just don't have that face of an all star. I think they don't have a superstar forward. Yeah, like you know, they like Thomas not. Tatar. They have like Jonathan Drew, and I still like believe in the guy and everything. But I think the way Montreal wants to present themselves, I think that if the Domi discussions don't go well something happens there and then they bring in taylor hall so but they have to get a meeting first right <laughs> man if we weren't on a new platform i'd be saying some stuff to you right now <laughs> I, I just really would. Chris, i've never been i i talked about this with will baldwin i remember when he was he he said he was like the worst part is that they didn't even get the meeting like it's it's such a slap in the... Th I've never been more embarrassed to be a fan of something in my life than when I found out that Tavares didn't even give Montreal and me. Like, it's... It's so sad that your team isn't even at that level. Now, I think if it's, like, last year's Montreal, I think he would have, but it's just that they were such a joke in 17-18. You've... Daniel, you've, you've awakened something. It's making me feel so sad about myself. Oh, I'm my sorry. God. sorry. I thought this was going to be a joy filled Did one that you were going to think about okay. this one. It's okay. We got it. men. What do they sign Taylor Hall for? Um, I don't know. Like he's going to like. I think it's ten and eight. Ten and eight. Yeah. 
Hey. Well, it can, it can only be seven. It can only be seven. Yeah. Unless, only seven. Oh, ten and seven. I apologize. Yeah. yeah. Ten and seven. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, I have Taylor Hall leaving Arizona as well. And I think if there's anyone being moved, I don't know why, but I have this terrible feeling that Johnny Goudreau is going to get traded and that it's going to be a complete mess in um, in Calgary. And I think they make a really bad signing, and it's seven years. It's some bad – because I'm someone who doesn't think Taylor Hall is quite as good as people in the is. Um, so I, I really think Calgary are going to sign him to something dumb like seven times 11. Like, remember how everyone thought Eric Carlson is spending money, then the Sharks gave him a contract bigger than Dowdy? Yeah. I feel like Calgary are desperate to do that. And, um, you, yeah, again, you, I have Calgary you, everywhere here. You, you, and I think bring up, you bring up oh. Johnny Goudreau. I had, I, this was like three years ago. I, bu- I had the weirdest dream I've ever had. I had Johnny Goudreau at a press conference in Toronto wearing a Maple Leafs jersey. Man, he's such a weird player because he's so good. But he just, like, I was watching uh, the the Team North America-Sweden game where in, like, yeah. two minutes, it was 2 nothing uh, North America. Goudreau gets a penalty shot whiffs on it, right? Like, he'll get a breakaway goal later on, but, like... I think there was a game he had like two penalty shots in a period, and he whiffed on them. And he just never shows up in the playoffs. He's he's the epitome of a regular season guy, but he Perfect. always has that breath of. But he's still a threat. He's like Pacioretty, except more offensive ability. But it was like Riley Foss was in the journalism program. I was talking to him and Will Baldwin once, and Will was just like, I think we were talking about Pacioretty because he had just come back to Montreal for the second time. Yeah. And 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 Riley made a joke of saying like, oh, but he's always a threat. And then yeah. It's the same breath as Johnny Goudreau, but um, did we all get our licks in about Taylor Hall there? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Daniel, this is an interesting player that I I think all of us want him to leave his current team, and mm-hmm. that's Tory Krug and the Boston Bruins, but he probably is going to stay. Am I right? Yeah, Um. so I have that going. I actually have that article where he talks about – he says his mind wanders about what's going on with uh, the pandemic and – his uh, UFA status. Um, it's pretty funny. Um, Luke Fox mentions that his dog's name is Fenway. Really? <laughs> yeah, like this guy's bought into like the Boston identity. Like he stays, they find a way. Or, I don't know, in a very weird situation, Petra Angelo leaves. And this guy slowly gets signed to replace oh. him on St. Louis. Oh. But for a lower cap hit. Oh my oh, I god. Th- I That's thought you said genius. Fred- for a second, I thought you said like Petrangelo would come to Boston. Was gonna say you get off this call right now, no. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel, I just want to point out that was the, the most genius thing you've ever said. I I haven't even thought about that. Oh, thank you. Tory Crew goes to <laughs> think about it. their their yes, their left side is ish, not the strongest, right? Because it's Dunn, Scandella, and Carl Gunnarsson. Mm-hmm. But leaves take, great. Leaves great. Take yeah. out, <laughs> take out Alex Petrangelo. Put in Tori Krug. So you have Tori Krug, Colton Pareko, Vince Dunn, Justin Falk. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. God damn, that's insane. What does he sign with though? What's what's the money looking like, Daniel? If he stays with Boston, I'll say he will sign for. I don't know why. I kept thinking 6.5. I know that's not too much from his current cap of 5.25, but he signs for 6.5, but with the added years okay. to stay with the Bruins. But if he goes to St. Louis, I'll say it's like s- around 7.5 for a shorter term. Really? That's yeah. wild, man. You're not going to like well, what I think. Go, go ahead, Alex. I think he's very. I think a lot of people, like everyone talks about Tory Krug. But I don't think people think that Tory Krug is that top, top level defenseman. Mm-hmm. I have him staying in Boston at eight years, and I think now that Boston has kind of opened up some cap space, I think they sign him to something like closer to like eight million dollars for eight years. Oh. I don't know, man. So if he stays, which is a very strong possibility to me, I think he'll take like seven. 
it's good because it's it's part of Bo- it's very annoyingly part of Boston's annoyingly is that even a word probably not but it's it's very annoying that Boston Bruins players have this trend of signing these team friendly deals and I just something is just screaming to me that Corey Tory Crew is going to do the same thing or. Steve Eiserman brings him home. Oh, come and on. He signs a Detroit. The first step boys will go. Come on. Uh, of course, they, rep- they replaced the contributions of Mike Green after the deadline oh, yeah, trade, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what they're missing. Okay. That's the magic. That's the magic right there. It's yeah. a little crazy, I know, but yeah. I got uh, Tory Krug and he, whatever. You know, he's staying in Boston. Like, I have no confidence he's going to mm-hmm. leave. Not at all. Um, okay. Tyson, uh, man, this is a fun one. Yeah. Uh, Tyson Berry from the Toronto Maple Leafs is probably leaving. Yeah. 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 I, I, who wants to start? I'll start. Um, you know, I still think he he gets the full seven years. I, I think there's a like of the fir- the first four players that we mentioned, all of them get the max years that they can get. Yeah, and I think I Tyson Berry's included in that, and I still have him making seven million dollars. And yeah, he had a he had a weird start to the year because, in my opinion, I think he was being told to do something he's not good at doing. Right? Oh like, my god! How are you? Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and and even you know, with that, he had in seventy games, he still had thirty nine points. Obviously, that's a career. Oh no! In, in sorry, sixteen seventeen, he had thirty eight points in seventy four games, but it, it was a very off year for Tyson Berry, and mm-hmm. I think he he goes to a team that really needs a power play quarterback. I have Vancouver down, really because they were interested in at in him at the uh, deadline, and. You know, I could see Jim Benning calling on June or July first, whenever that may be this year, and saying, "Hey, I'll give you whatever the hell you want." And and I put Detroit down just for fun because I think they could be a team that just makes a call. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't think of a lot of teams that could use the expertise of Tyson Berry. Like, I don't think that's what Winnipeg is looking for. Like that's a team that needs right-handed defensemen. I just don't think that that's what they don't need Tyson Berry's skill set. Uh, Daniel. Okay, so I have this team going because I kind of feel that their other right-handed defenseman is probably leaving for Seattle. Um, and this is a team where I think they just keep. Every year, try to just keep adding things, but even though it doesn't work out, and then Tyson Berry is going to be a perfect example of that. Um, and it's going to be the, Buff- <laughs> the Buffalo Sabres. Oh. Um, I think I don't think Brandon Montour resigns there. Okay. Um, outside of that, like you know, you have Colin Miller, Rasmus Ruskalainen, and then Jake McCabe, and then Rasmus Dahlin. But yeah, other Henry Yokoharu. But like, I think they're just going to try to add him and go. You know, we have these long-term deals. Let's just try to see what we could have and yeah. do something there. Uh, I thought of Buffalo as well, but, you know, there were uh, – his comments kind of came out, and he was talking about he wants to sign with a team that, that he could excel in. And that's really playing quarterbacking a power play, and not the second power play unit, but the first power play unit. Mm-hmm. And I know in Vancouver that won't be the case. I just – I can't think of a team other than Vancouver and Detroit. Like what team yeah. doesn't have a power uh, number one power play quarterback? Yeah. Well, dude, wouldn't wouldn't Quentin Hughes be that for Vancouver though? Uh, yeah, it, he would be, but Vancouver was interested in him in the at the trade deadline, and he's True. from B- and, and he's from BC. I could see him signing in Vancouver. Uh, I think that's fair. I actually have a team that you actually said probably wouldn't be a fit, and I said Winnipeg. Okay. Just because. I look at them and I think, man, just I want you to get a good defenseman who can lock some minutes. <clears throat> and if yeah. I say, just man, just go full offense, just do it, just absolutely do. It. And I think he'd be a better defenseman offensively than Morrissey. And, they, and so just, and then you imagine, all right, a proper power play: Barry, Line A, Shifley, Wheeler, Connor. Yeah. And they're like, oh, 
That's quite lovely. Yeah, I, I had a couple other defensemen uh, linked to... Um, Winnipeg? To Winnipeg, sorry, yeah. Oh, my God. Same. Same. It's like defenseman, Winnipeg. Right. Uh, no, we'll go to... Um, to Foley. So, uh, Tyler to Foley. I have him going to Carolina because oh, I think... That's interesting. Use, because, like, Centerman, they've got Stahl. Good. Yeah. They've got... Aho, fantastic. They've, you know, I think you could really use a nice scoring winger to complement the likes of, you know, of Tavor Teravine, who's more of a playmaker, but then, you know, Svechnikov, too. Uh, I think Tyler Toffoli would be a nice little fit in Carolina, and I think you could give him, like, six for a few years. I don't know. He's not saying him forever. They own the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Daniel? I have Tyler Foley going to the Florida Panthers for... Six point okay. two million for four or five years. Okay. Um, it's so much like a Brett Conley type of deal where you know they kind of slightly overpay for a top nine winger. Um, he's gonna get the minutes in Florida because I really think Hoffman and or Dandenoff are gone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think that's just. I think at this point where we're talking about this guy, it's just solid signing, and he's still pretty young. He's twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. I, I have Toffoli leaving as well. I, I think they try to sign. I think Vancouver definitely tries to sign Toffoli, see if he's willing to take somewhat of a discount, a, a shorter-term contract. I don't think that's going to be successful. Um, I have him signing a five-year contract at $6 million. Um, and I have three teams. I have Calgary. Pretty much the same reasons before. I think they're just trying to change things up. They're probably if they do end up tr- trading one of their bigger pieces, he's a guy that c- that could come in. Uh, Edmonton, they're still looking for another winger to play with McDavid. I don't think it's acceptable that he's playing with Cassian on his right or Ennis on his left. Like I love Tyler Ennis, but that's not who, that's not who you play with Connor McDavid um, and. My last one is Colorado, uh, similar to what I said before. You know, they were looking to add a guy um, to their top six. They brought in Vlad Nemestikov, uh earlier this year for a fourth round pick, but I I don't know if that's necessarily something they look at moving forward. Maybe they bring in Tyler Toffoli. They do have the cap space for it. So, uh huh. Okay, then we'll we'll look at Hoffman and Dadenoff together because yeah. I think it's fair to say. One of them stay and one of them leave. And if I'm the Panthers, I hold on to Hoffman. But if he's the one who leaves, I think him or Toffoli could end up in Carolina. I think they're both scoring leaders that either could look at. And for me, I think Dadenov would probably go. Also, Hoffman could probably be a good option for the Oilers. Yeah. I uh, think Dadenov, but primarily, I think Dadenov goes to. He's an older winger. So that means he has to go to Minnesota. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> Not Zuccarello. The same like, a ri- Zuccarello like a ridiculous team. amount, yeah. Yeah. Seven That's million four right. years. Why not? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about Hoffman? Uh, uh, well, he would. Uh, he if 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 Carolina couldn't get to Foley, then I could either see them or the Oilers looking at Hoffman slash uh, like, So you're saying they both leave? Sorry, one. I think one of them stay, okay. and then the, either one of them could go to one of those teams I just mentioned. He said Hoffman's not going to Minnesota because he's not old enough. Yeah, um, sure. I, I have Hoffman. In my opinion, I think they they try harder to keep Hoffman, um, and he would sign. I think five years. You look at something like six to six and a half million. Like if we're talking about Tyler Toffoli getting six million, I think Hoffman gets somewhere around the same and. And so does so does Dadanov. I just think Dadanov is going to leave. He gets five years. I think looking at somewhere between five and a half to six million. And, and I think there's three teams. I think there's Buffalo. We're talking about some, we needed that. That's a team that needs forwards that can pretty yeah. much do anything. Um, Calgary, same reason as before. Just looking to change things up. If they end up trading one of their guys, bringing in someone who can do something. Uh, and this one's interesting. I put Columbus down. Um, you know, last year you know, they lost Panarin. That was a huge loss. They brought in Nyquist. I think they for sure have the cap space to do it in bringing in another forward uh, I, that complements the team. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and Daniel Emanuel. 
All right. <laughs> um, I think that enough stays. Um, Hoffman, I think he goes to Colorado if they they miss on Taylor Hall. I like that. Yeah. Been together. Um, do you, what about their deals? Tell me which one gets deals. Which one gets six point six? Six. Oh, um, I think Hoffman gets six million for five years. Um, with Colorado, that enough. I think Florida is gonna try to give him more of the same. Honestly, because they need to keep him, or are they gonna get desperate? But like yeah. seeing the amount of guys they're missing out on. Mm-hmm. The issue I have with Florida, and it's. You know, I don't actually think I put Florida on anyone else's list simply because they're looking to get rid of salary. That's my big issue in trying to give yeah. uh, to give Hoffman six and a half million. I don't even know if Florida would be guilt- willing to to give out that money. That's very true. So we'll see what happens think- there. To be yeah. honest, the way the season went for them, I I could see them losing both. So can oh. I. Yeah, probably. Uh, this is another player who. So this is a player that I think I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have a lot of money. To be honest, sorry, if he doesn't get a lot of money from a team, I think he's more of a league min one million dollar guy, and that's Dustin Bufflin, who I have going to either Arizona or Toronto. Okay. A nice cheap right-handed defenseman who's got some size and can actually play. And yeah. I don't know why I said Arizona. There's just a side of me that's like, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I have so I, I looked at him I kind of compared him to what happened with Kevin Shankirk and I, they're different situations obviously but similar in, in, in some way um, I have him actually getting one year two million dollars it might be a little much but I think a team I think they're not necessarily a bidding war but I think there's going to be multiple teams in on him Um. I have three. Obviously, Toronto, right-handed defenseman, quite simple. That's pretty much it. Uh, I think Minnesota, just because he's from the area. And <laughs> that's it. That might be nostalgia. I don't know. Just seems like yeah. it, they would do something like that. And this one, Chicago. Chicago, he goes Bring, back. Get the boys back together. Who, let's get Nicholas Hajarmelson back to Chicago. Okay, we're going to... Rebuild this cup team. Bring back Andrew Ladd uh, for the third time. Bring back Andrew <laughs> yeah. Ladd, yeah. All right. I say we, we pick this up a bit just because we All right. have uh, a lot of names that to show get there. All right. No worries. All right. I'll go quick. Um, should I do Bufflin and Kovalchuk at the same time? Sure. No, no, no. No, oh, no. no. Okay. Now, all right. Okay. Dustin Bufflin. Okay. I have two teams with Dustin Bufflin. So um, for – being a right hand shot and the toughness, he goes to the Leafs because they need that in the playoffs. Right. But based on how he is, I could see him going to the Bruins as well because he wants to win at this point. Stop it! Uh, stop! Sports. Stop it! God. And just like the type of player he is too, he would look good in the Bruins. I can picture it very easily. Yeah. Okay. This next guy is man. If he doesn't come back to Montreal, I'll be pretty shocked. Considering Alex Romanov, like actively, he's like, yeah, I'd love to play with this guy, and he was such a big part of the pitch. I think Ilya Kovalchuk comes back to Montreal. Like yes. between one and three million. I don't know. Thirty five deal. It's yeah. one year, whatever, it won't be too much. I have him one year two million, exact same reason as you said. I, I'd be very surprised if he does not come back. Mm-hmm. I say he comes back if Washington doesn't go far, but if they make a they make a serious run, I could see or if they win the cup, to be honest, I could see Washington bringing him back out of the nostalgia. How dare you? We already lost Scandella, dang it. Okay, um, this guy is... I, I if we, if we He's a bit of an alternative to Barry in a way. I think Justin Schultz is gone from uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I think Winnipeg would be foolish to not try and swipe this guy up. Yeah, I'd agree. I think this Winni- this just has Winnipeg written all over it. I don't think he resigns in Pittsburgh. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, you look, they have Brian Dumoulin, Chris Letang, that's your first pair. Your second pair is John Marino, Marcus Patterson, right? So you're going to play him on the third pair with, right now, it's Jack Johnson. I don't think that makes sense. And, you know, the money that he could get on the open market doesn't make sense to uh, bring someone like him back. Alexander. I mean, Daniel Xander. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. Um, I think he goes to the Jersey Devils. 
he wants the term and he gets the minutes there. He platoons the right side with Subban and they figure out something. I think it's very fair. Oh, what, um, what was your contract? Contract, I think it's going to be five million for five years. What does he make now? Five point five. Yeah. Fair enough. Um. I, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I have him at four years, four point two five. Really? Four twenty. Yeah. Ooh. New dog in the video games. Woo. Fantastic. Uh, TJ Brody, a guy who there was some links to Toronto, but. Kadri nicks that type of deal. So I was going to say, yeah, why not? TJ Brody, a Toronto Maple Leaf, and he gets Cody CC's money for five uh, years. Oh, that's uh, interesting. So I, have, I agree. I have oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just, no, go ahead. I was, go ahead. Oh, I just agree. Like, uh, everything Adam said, basically, I, I felt the same way. Cody CC is gone, and yeah. you bring in TJ Brody. I So I have two teams. One of them is Toronto. I think. I don't know if he gets a if he gets a five year contract. I have him at three years for five million dollars. You know he's left handed and he can play. Yes, he can play on the right, but who needs a left handed defenseman? Ah, oh, le Canadien de Montreal. Right, the Montreal Canadiens need a left handed defenseman. Right. That is my second team. Qu'est-ce que c'est le numéro sur le com sur le les contracts? Three ben. years, five million. Oui, uh, yeah. bah yeah, oui, tu tu dis ça. Cinq mille pour trois années, très bien. Uh, non, maintenant, uh, Travis Hamonic, je aussi a il a le Winnipeg Jets. I have Hamonic going to Winnipeg. Yeah, so do I. Or Toronto. Like, like every other defenseman, I kind of have here is like Winnipeg. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I have I, him at four years, four and a half million, either Winnipeg or Toronto. Right, mm -hmm. he's a right-handed defenseman. Dan, um, yeah, I, I, I think I've talked about it before. I'm a big Travis Hamonic fan. Um, yeah. the only thing is, like, I like, yeah, he's right-handed. Um, something Toronto could definitely use. The only thing I kind of have with it is just, it might be a lot of money tied to him, and he kind of does the same stuff as Jake Muzzin. Yep. Jake Muzzin or Jake Gardner? Yeah, I take Jake another. Muzzin. I take another Jake Muzzin. Oh yeah, he's another Jake Muzzin. Like he plays a pretty heavy game, you know. We, if they add him, that'd be great. You know, he plays like you know the Bash Brothers in uh, the Ducks, my Mighty Ducks. Movie. If he can, <laughs> so, yeah, if I, he can I, play like that with Morgan Riley, I'm perfectly yeah. fine with that. Mm -hmm. And okay, um, that was everyone for Hamannick, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, I have a player here who can play center, who can play wing, a safe two-way player that I think Colorado is going to go after. That's Mikael Grandland. And let's say it's four years at, at six because he's a center. Yeah. yeah. I, Mikael, I, I, have big I, have, I have him at five years instead of four years, same amount of money. I have, uh, yeah, Colorado could definitely take a look at him. Uh, I think Carolina maybe takes a look at him as well, or Columbus. All That's teams that need forwards and have cap space. I have going to Montreal. Um, you know, he's good to add another top six center. Um, he had a really rough season in yes. Nashville. I don't think his value is very high right now. Like, I think he gets four years for five point five million. Okay. We're all, all right. we're all within a ballpark of each other. <laughs> uh, wow, we, we think so. We think alike. Hey, Sammy Vatanen. Where is he going, guys? <laughs> Daniel? I think, yeah, if it's a Finnish player, Finnish or Swedish player, it's either, Win and he's a right-handed shot, Winnipeg. Or Anaheim. Or Anaheim, but the Ducks <laughs> are not in a position to bring him back, so I think he goes to Winnipeg for 4.8 for wow, four very years specific um i would have put toronto i just don't know if he necessarily fits the need in toronto as he's a little more offensive mm -hmm. but i could see kyle dubas uh, making a push for a player like that uh christopher tanev i first of all he's gone out of winnipeg by the way like uh, that's been vancouver vancouver who did i say winnipeg Brandon oh, played for Winnipeg. Well, guess what? <laughs> I have Christopher Tanev going to Winnipeg. Because, like, I think this makes sense. Like, right-handed, safe defenseman. And I don't think he would be that expensive, to be honest. 
Is it really done? Like, you know, this is my thing. I think it could really fit. That or I think if, if Calgary lose a bunch of D-men, I really think they could also look at a guy like Tanev, a safer player, and bring him in as well. Yeah, I, I actually, you know, I think there's a chance that Vancouver looks at bringing him back. If they want to bring him back, then they obviously don't go after any of the def- uh, the. I think I just had Tyson Berry before. I don't think they bring Tyson Berry back. Um, Try to bring Tyson Berry in. And, and you know, if not, I, Winnipeg, Calgary, like you said, like even Toronto. Mm-hmm. I, I have him. I have him going to Pittsburgh because I think Justin Schultz is gone from there. They need another right hand shot, and you know this is reminiscent of a yeah. Pittsburgh, like, contract. They like just fill in, fill in the gap. The only issue I have with Pittsburgh is, is he's if he's playing on his strong side, he I don't think he jumps over Patterson, and I don't think he jumps over Chris Letang, mm-hmm. because John Marino and. Marcus Pedersen played so well together. Is he comfortable? Are they comfortable giving him that money to play on the third pair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my like, that's I, my issue. I'm trying to like I don't know. I'm like because I'm looking at like he's never played a full season. Right. I kind of just feel that the worry is right now with things that he might take less money to play on a contending team. And I think when you go to Pittsburgh, you kind of tell that you're not going to always stay in like one pairing it's gonna yeah. you're gonna move up because everyone's always injured on that team right yeah right, right. that's so. very true uh next defenseman eric gustafson and i think calgary actually try their hardest to hold on to this guy okay. i really I, I i don't know i just feel like they, they try and keep him i don't know the price because gustafson's a weird player yeah but I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe he takes one of those players. It's like a one-two year deal or something. I, I don't know the, the money either, but I think Calgary for sure. For uh, so I had him going. He's left-handed, so I have him obviously going to Montreal, um, yeah. and Florida. You know, Florida. What was the big thing they were talking about going into the deadline? Was looking for someone that can play with Aaron Ekblad, and, and I think he could play next to Aaron Ekblad. And I think you know now his now is his time to get that money. Um, you know, he's, he was vastly underpaid, uh, at the, just over a million dollars. So I have him at five years, uh, at five and a half to six million dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn. I had him either going to Anaheim, you know, Swedish signing, um, or I agree with Alex going to Florida. Like, they're two teams that, like, for one, the Ducks, they do have the defensemen, but it kind of showed that that left side got ravaged by injuries. They're still waiting a lot of the prospects to develop. And then with Florida, Air Neckblad kind of needs someone on that left side. And they just they just need they need a good puck moving defenseman. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Shattenkirk, I could I I think he's gonna stay in Tampa or retire because I mean, why would you want to leave? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't think you know we're gonna get to two RFAs in a little bit. But I don't think Tampa will have the money to bring him back. I think he's had a pretty decent season uh, in Tampa Bay. He had 34 points in 70 games. And I think, you know, Toronto looks at him and he would, they were one of the teams, I believe, in on him when he was uh, bought out by New York. And I think Detroit just takes a look at him, too, at like one year, maybe around $3 million. Mm-hmm. Uh Monsieur Centeno. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would want him to stay. Like he fits so well with the Lightning system, but yeah, they don't have the money. I don't know. I had this feeling he would return to St. Louis. Yeah, man. I always forget that he was a boil because he was just like, it was just like when I started getting into the sport. And I yeah. always like I think of him more as a capital and a disappointing capital at that. Remember mm-hmm. that? Remember yes, that? I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. So, yeah, he lost money badly. Tyler Ennis, our favorite boy, and we don't know why. I think he is going to the New York Islanders. Really? Because they could scoring, and I think he'd be cheap. That or Montreal, because why not? I think he stays in Edmonton. You think? Yeah, I think, you know, he's had a pretty good season there. I don't see why he has any reason to leave. He, he played some games with Connor McDavid. That's and fair. That's, that's insane. Like, I, I think, and I... You know, the last two years, I think, even in Toronto, yeah, he got injured, but he really looked good. And, and yeah, he was on the fourth line, but he, he really did look good. 
uh, even this year, partially in Ottawa and partially in Edmonton. I think he gets like a two-year deal, one and a half million. Nothing big, but mm-hmm. I think he's more than league men. Mm-hmm. Daniel? I think, yeah, he stays in Edmonton for around that similar cap at 1.5. Or, I don't know, I've, if the Leafs don't fully trust Pierre Engvall, I think they bring him back. Okay. Uh, the man who my heart belongs to, Craig Smith. Yeah. He's coming to Montreal, baby. No, he's not. I don't know why, but I think he is. He, He'll come league men because he wants to be uh, here so bad. Yeah. No, seriously, yeah. I think Craig Smith is just a really good tool of a player. Yeah. And I can see him getting like 3.55 mil somewhere. Yeah, I have him staying. I think, you know, if you're not bringing back Mikhail Granlund, and you, they don't obviously have a lot of cap space to work with, uh, Anyways, and they don't really have anyone else to resign at the moment. Obviously, resign sign Yossi to that extension. Don't have a lot. They don't have big names to bring back this summer. You know, three years, three and a half million for Craig Smith. Daniel, Middle tell me about. Mm-hmm. I have him going to either Florida if they don't sign Hoffman or Danidoff, and if not, I could see him going to the Dallas Stars. I think they take a flyer on him, um, see where he fits, and try to give him, I don't know, like, give him enough minutes to become, like, a good supporting cast to, like, you know, what is really a top line and then a few other guys. Right. Okay, our last name on the UFAs, and this was very purposeful because this is a guy I think either someone will take a very, you know, risky chance with this guy or he's going to the KHL, and that's Alex Galchenia. I think he'll either go to Buffalo because nowhere else for him to go, or like Detroit, or, or he's going to play in like Locomotive CSKA or something. Like that. Uh, I have him actually staying at Minnesota. Why? I think they just they need players to fill the roster around their young guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we know pretty much Miko Koiv who's all but retiring. Like he just hasn't announced it yet. Obviously, he was going to be part of that monster trade that was going to send Parise to New York and Lad to Minnesota, and, and that ended up falling through. But I, I think he's going to retire, and they still need they still need players, right? Like, yes, they have all the young guys. Kirill Kaprasov's uh, supposed to sign uh, for sign their <clears throat> entry level with them, but I still think they just kind of say, "Hey, let's just see what happens." Mm-hmm. Um, for me, yeah, it's either he goes to the Red Wings and just gets a bunch of minutes because they need everything. Or um, an interesting one is he gets a training camp invite to the Ducks because Ryan Kessler is all but going to retire. Um, the Ducks have no center depth. Like I mean, like they will in terms of like their prospects, but as of right now, someone to kind of fill Alex, it in right now. I Alex think he goes to the Ducks. Is not a center. Not a huh? Center. He's not. A they, center. They'll, they'll try it. A they'll try it. They'll try it. They, every team try to. They can it try work. and fail. That's if that's what okay. Anaheim is okay. looking to do. Okay, yeah. there's there's six players that I think these guys are either staying with their teams or they're retiring. Pretty so much. I'm gonna go. Rapid fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a name. Both of you tell me retire or staying for another year or hold holding on for another year. Uh, Daniel Joe Thornton. He goes to the Bruins. For, no, he they re- they reconcile and he goes for the cup run. I don't think uh, he goes uh, to the Bruins. Nope. I I don't think he goes to the Bruins. They apparently they weren't even interest really that interested at the trade deadline. When the te- teams wanted a full dose of Joe, like they wanted a season, it was really weird. But no, anyway, Jumbo Joe, stay or go? Uh, I, um, I think he stays in San Jose. All right, um, Patrick Marlowe uh, retires. No, no, sorry, no, he doesn't. He stays. He goes back to San Jose just for fun. I think he resigns with Pittsburgh, but plays on the fourth line. Uh, I'm going to skip Char because I forgot he has a one-year extension, so we're going to ignore that. Uh, Justin Williams, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. He comes back halfway through the season again and resigns with the Hurricanes. Yeah, he does that again. Just I don't think he was satisfied with playing 10 games. 
Craig Anderson, Ottawa Senators no, goaltender. Just an FYI, it's a Dano Char. It does he expires this year. I thought he signed an extension. No, he signed an extension last year. Where has the time gone, guys? Uh, I I, I, it's fair to say another year of Boston, though. Probably yeah. if yeah. he comes back. He takes uh, a pay cut for uh, Toy Krug. I don't know. Craig uh, Anderson, though. Oh, I think uh, he's retiring. He takes up a job within the management for the Ottawa Senators. Yeah. Then leaves because he's sick of Eugene. <laughs> um, and we'll finish off with Mr. Unfortunately, only had two wins on the season, Jimmy Howard. I think he goes back to Detroit one more year. Uh, yeah. He, I can't see him with any other team. You know or who would, take, who would take a risk with him right now? The, the thing with these six players is that I really think it, a lot of it depends on how long, like what's the plan with this season and when next season starts. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's going to be a lot for their body, right? Like it's not like these are young guys. These guys are pretty much like Char is in his 40s. Uh, they're almost all these guys are almost at 40 years old. So, let's say we're we're starting in July. We don't end until beginning of October. Then we don't start until January. All right, we let's have a uh, we have 20 more names to oh get. Oh my god. Okay, but these ones will be fast. Let's just go. Let's just go. Okay. Okay, we have the RFA skaters, and we'll start off with the goalies. Okay. Tristan Jari, the combo. Tristan Jari and Matt Murray, both of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Okay. Um, I. I don't know what happens here. Okay. I mean, I, do they to seem to like Murray. Yeah. Uh, so I have Tristan Jari uh, ends up getting traded. I do not think anyone offers sheets, offer sheets him. I don't know if he can be offer sheet, but I think he's tra his rights are traded. Uh, you know, he really came out this year, and I think he gets something similar to Pavel Francouz at two years, two million. Uh, Matt Murray, on the other hand, let's not forget two cups. Um, he he pretty much he played 21 games that first that first uh, first cup run I believe. Uh, he's had fine. He had an off year, you know. Obviously, he had, he had things happening outside of uh, outside of hockey. I think he gets five years, five and a half million dollars. That brings him to the age of 30. Uh, Daniel, what goes on with the pair of Pittsburgh goaltenders? Yeah, I think I'm the opposite. I think Tristan Jari stays, and then Matt Murray gets traded to Calgary. <laughs> How about you Toronto? Have a you have a defenseman. Send him to Calgary and Winnipeg. Yeah. How about uh, <laughs> How about Toronto? Have you seen that? Oh, Matt Murray? Yeah, Toronto? we're talking about trading Frederick Anderson and then uh, bringing in Matt Murray. Yeah, I would be okay with that. You know, a young guy. Yeah, I'd be okay with it too. I just it seems a little weird. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't a lot of movement. A lot of movement to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to Mackenzie Blackwood of the New Jersey Devils. This is a guy that Alex, you have been very high on on the show, especially. Uh, what kind of contract does this guy get? Because again, it's really two seasons of work, and he's a young goaltender. Yeah. So I, I I still think he gets a decent contract. I have him down at three years, three million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, even, go ahead. Even last year, he played twenty three games. Uh, he was ten and ten. I guess he only start. Uh, it's it says twenty three games played. He's ten and ten. I don't know what that means. Uh, Nine eighteen save percentage, and even this year, uh, with the team he was on, he was twenty two fourteen and eight. And a 9.15 save percentage with three shutouts. It definitely feels like it's like three, four years or something between 4.5 and that is like the new goalie deal. Thanks to Darcy Kemper, right? Yeah. I, 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 I just think because he's a little bit younger, they, they he ends up on the safe side of things. And then when that three years expires, you know, he, he could get paid depending mm -hmm. on what happens. Uh, Daniel, why don't you tell me about the second coming of uh, of Martin Bird? <laughs> I think he gets a bridge deal, three million, three years, three million a year. Yeah, um, yeah he's continuing to prove himself. He's going to get the minutes. Um, you know, he's a world junior favorite for all of us, even though that team finished sixth with Mitch Marner on the team. Um, but yeah, uh, he gets that. I think he is the future for New Jersey. That's fair. And we'll until finish they, off until they sign the uh, the uh, draft the Yaroslav Askarov. Yeah, that's true. Until that happens, and then they have that tandem going yeah. on for them. 
Uh, the new backup in New York, because Lundquist is is going to disappear. I don't know how it's going to happen, but uh, Alexander Georgiev. Georgiev. You don't yeah. give um, Bel- What's he like? What, Bulgarian? Okay. He is from Belarus. Oh, Bulgaria. Sorry, not Belarus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, this is a guy I couldn't see him getting more than four. I think even that's a bit much for him. That's a lot. That's not what I put him at at all. Where do you put him at? I had him at. You know, he's played two pretty much two years like he played 10 games in 17 18 but the last two years and i think he's been pretty good i just have him at a simple two year two years two million dollars he's a backup he really right now is a backup and, all right uh, sorry and you know uh-huh. igor shesterkin's coming in and i think that's the guy who you go with that's the guy who you run run with mm-hmm. daniel i had 2.5 for three years so uh yeah, kind of similar. Like he probably like on a bad team, he'll play like a lot of starts. But if he stays in New York, then he's probably going to be relegated to what 30, 40 ga- 30, 35 games. I could see them doing a platoon system with the two. Yeah, Shusterkin probably playing uh, more games though. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll go to the RFA skaters, and uh, you want to start from the bottom? Sure, let's go- get nuts. All right, Kevin LeBanc, this one we knew about Kevin LeBanc, he took a show-me deal and he did not show up. Yeah, well, neither did his team. Yes. <laughs> I, I have Kevin LeBanc, you know, I know he had 33 points in 70 games this year, but the last two years, uh, he, he really was improving. I think the entire team just wasn't wasn't on par, like I think Martin Jones especially. Um, I have him at two years, two and a half million. I, I don't know how... What, what, how San Jose pays more than that? Mm-hmm. Daniel, what do you have? Yeah, I think he stays with San Jose. Um, he really did not show up this year. It was like, but same thing as the team. But yeah, he stays with Sharks. I think he gets the increase just based on his previous efforts. So yeah, two point five for three years. Uh, if I'm Kevin LeBanc and the Sharks, I'm just trying to do another one year deal. Just because, like, everything went wrong. Um, Josh Anderson's a guy who's not going to be a blue jacket. Yeah. No. That's the only guy no. on my list who is not staying with his, with the original team. And he's, I mean, I, I, there's a feeling with me where I'm thinking, hey, why do I have this sneaking suspicion he's going to be a, a Columbus, sorry, not Columbus, a, a Washington Capitol? He could be a guy. Like, I, I feel like it fits their... Uh their team like you look at who they brought you're bringing in brendan dillon uh rodko gudis you know they still they have also have tom wilson he's not as fizz as aggressive in a way as tom wilson but he's still a, a big boy yeah he's a good Better hockey a- player yeah mm-hmm. okay for me um I think the way he plays, you know, he plays that top-heavy game. So I think he goes to the Ducks. Um, if he, if not, and I think if the Leafs move on from a captain or Andreas Janssen, I think he goes to the Leafs as like a top nine guy. Yeah, I, I, I think have, that money's the defenseman. Yeah, I think that money's going to defenseman as well. Um, I have him at three years at three and a half million dollars. What about because this guy he's because well first Josh Anderson's tough because he didn't get to play a lot. Yeah. Another guy like that is Anthony Manta. Yeah, he was good when he was healthy. You remember he had that like four goal game earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what Detroit can give this guy. I think you try to sign him as long as you can. I have him. I have him at five years at six million dollars. He's a big boy. Anthony Mantha. What about you, Daniel? Yeah, I think he stays. I really like this player a lot. Um, he he stays at Detroit. He stays loyal to them, and no matter what happens with this rebuild, he's one of the cornerstones. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> one of the the few. Sorry about the motorcycle. Uh, that one of the few diamonds in the rough of Detroit. Andre Burakovsky and the 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 second leading scorer on Colorado this year. Andre Burakovsky. Yeah, I think it was it was interesting. 
you know, he gets traded from Colorado and has quite a good season. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they want to do a long, do something long term uh, with him. I have him at two years for uh, f- three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah, he got twenty goals this year. Okay. Yeah. How do you go to your guy who's your second leading scorer and say, "I'm giving you three and a half"? I'm telling you to p- tell me, tell me why I should prove it to me. But he just did. Prove it to me again. How many players have had one good season, get paid, and then just drop dead? Hold many, on. a lot. Uh, uh, Andrew, and Andre Burakovsky's numbers here. Okay, I have his numbers up. 25 points two years before. He's scored 20 goals years before, too. No, he hasn't. This is his first year. What am I looking at? Oh, Not okay. Andrei no, I was looking Burakovsky. at. All right. But this is his first opportunity in the top six role to really show his talents. He's always been stuck behind the Ovechkins of the world. I think you I think you got to give him more 3.5. At uh, two years. Yeah, if you want to sign him long term, go right ahead. I think they're going to try and buy out more UFA. You know, I'm, I don't even want it. We've been going for like four hours all together. 17 minutes. But all I right. mean, the other show too. I don't have oh, the yeah. energy. Yeah. Uh, Andy Duclair. Oh, sorry, uh, Daniel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same thing. Burakowski stays 3.5 to 4 million, depending on what Colorado feels. Okay, um, Anthony Duclair is. Pr- I would. I would be shocked if he left Ottawa. Not only from their point of view, but for him and what has like a career re- revitalization he's had there. The only organization has believed in him. I think he stays in Ottawa. <laughs> That's very true. He's well. What? What again? What? What did Tortorella say about him again? I don't, um, can't, like, I don't remember. He doesn't know how to play the game. He doesn't know how to play the game. <laughs> Imagine your coach says that to you, and then you're an all-star the next year. Um, Man, I love sports. I, I have him staying too, and I have. Him, I, I think maybe it might be a little bit of an overpayment, but Otto also needs to just hit the cap floor. Uh, three years, three million dollars. Yeah, that's workable. I think with him. Another fascinating player that is it had a bit of a career resurgence, and that's Ryan Strom, second line center somehow. Probably not a good second line center, but I don't know. Like, like the Rangers have a few deals to work out, and I don't know what you can give Ryan Strom. Like that's a do whatever you want their deal. I don't well, know. I think he had a really like looking at what his totals have been in the past like his first well his first full year with New York he are uh, the Islanders he put up 50 points then he had two okay years then the Jordan Eberle trade and then everything kind of went downhill when he went to Edmonton gets traded to New York and he had like even his first year uh, in New York, which was last year, he had 33 points in 63 games. So it depends on what New York wants to do. Do they want to? Like I have him at a two-year deal. What's the money? I have him at two years, like three and a half to four million dollars. I mean, he is a center. I mean, I think the Pajot deal is going to screw up that stuff for a lot of teams too. What about you, Daniel? Um, I think if the Rangers don't make one of those really big moves for like the top tier free agents then they settle on giving ryan strom 4.5 for four years Mm -hmm. wait wait what say that again 4.5 a year for four years oh see i I can't even disagree with that because again pajo yeah Man, that, you better not mess up the Phil Deneau stuff. Uh, Vince Dunn, a guy we've talked about a lot with um, in regards to the Blues. Yeah, I I have him a three-year deal at $4 million. Yeah, I don't know how he gets anything less when you when you see what Scandella and then... Um, and then what... Uh, God, Scandella and... and um, Falk. Okay, Falk, yeah, Jesus Christ. I, I think that's fair. Daniel... Yeah, same here. I think he takes that. The money deserves now, but it's like a bridge deal that, you know, he may become like, you know, he might become their top right-handed defenseman in the future. This is he's, an... Uh, he's left-handed. He's left-handed. Oh, left-handed. Sorry, left-handed defenseman. 
This is a difficult one for me to look at. Uh, Max Domi from Montreal. Yeah. Because first of know. all, when Elliot Friedman says that he's heard that they that they were looking at trade him and other people saying absolutely not, he plays center. He had a great year, 28 goals last year. He was probably going to break 20 goals again this year, but not like 70 ish points. Sorry, my my Rottweiler is barking. Sorry. I, I don't know what you'd give Domi, but if it's I, I wouldn't be surprised if they dealt him either because they have so many centermen coming up and he wasn't looking good on the wing. Mm-hmm. I, even, but I think in all likelihood you have to go a bridge with Max. But does he want to do that? Because apparently he likes Montreal and you know everyone does once they actually start playing for them, but just getting them there in the first place is such an issue. So I, I think it has to be a bridge two, three years at maybe five, maybe six mil. Because I don't think he's taking a lot less than that when you look at the bridge deals of a guy like like Point. He's not the same player, but when it comes to Montreal's tax situation, I don't see him getting anything less than that. Right. I, I wasn't Thank sure. You. I wasn't sure about that, so I let you handle that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty fair. Um anything else on Max Domi? No. No. Victor Golovzin. All of them, but he scores a lot of goals. Uh, Buffalo has to. I'm assuming he's gonna. They're gonna have to pay the Buffalo tax to keep him at a good number. Yeah. Well, uh, I was, I wasn't sure. Like both him and Reinhardt, I wasn't sure how to approach uh, their deals because you know Olafson one year in the NHL. Yeah, he scored 20 goals. How do you do it? Do you sign him? Like I have, what you're gonna give him three years at what four million dollars for going scoring 20 goals once, or does he? Do they say, hey, here's a one uh, one year deal, two million dollars. Show me that you can score 20 goals. Show me you can put up the points again, and we'll go long term from there. So I, I think there's two options uh, with Victor Olafson, uh, and then with Reinhardt. Uh, I said, I said, you know, you already signed to a bridge deal. You have to sign him long term, eight years, seven and a half million dollars. Seven and a half? That is a that is a lot of money. But they, yeah, they have to, they have to pay him. Yeah, they're only like good players. Yeah. Man, what about you, Daniel? Yeah, I think Rick Olivson only one really solid year. Uh, give him that three or three point five for one year. Say, come back and show us that you deserve a longer term. Uh, what, what do you do if you're Buffalo and he knocks and knocks it out the park again? Because then you're going to have to pay even more. Then you pay him. Yeah. But I think based, I'll, they, based on their depth, they kind of have to. I think <laughs> like given their situation, yeah. like they. They're gonna lose out financially on this, regardless. I think with Victor Olafson, um, he was really one bright spot for the Sabers this year, aside from like the obvious like Eichel um, and like Reinhardt. But I think with Reinhardt as well, um, you overpay him to let him stay in Buffalo, and he's a center. Very true. Uh, let me see the. He's played it at times. I'm pretty sure. I think they've tried to split him up with Eichel, oh. and it's just... Uh, God, we need Will Christopoulos on the show. No, we have to know more about Casey Middlestat. Oh, I don't Lord. Think, uh, I mean, we got a pair of RFAs for the Tampa Bay Lightning who seem to, like, we always think they're in trouble, oh. but they always... Fit. Can I be but honest? This- I for sure undervalued both of them because they're both from Tampa Bay. But super... Oh. Sorelli is uh, so yeah. Of course, it's Mikau, defenseman Mikael Sergachev, and centerman Anthony Sorelli, who are Sorelli, who is Jeff Merrick's favorite player, and should be in the Selkie conversation. And Mikael Sergachev, which like people, people always go. I've seen a lot of fans go back and forth on this guy. Uh, so I, I don't know what you'd give him. It, it's it's Tampa Bay. So if he gets like. Like looking at their cap friendly, I don't even know what it's what they're looking like. It's so not good. They have about I think it should be around six million in cap space. I'm assuming someone's gonna trade for uh, one of Palat, Gord, Johnson, or Kalorn. Um, that's I, I can guarantee you that one of those players will be gone. So that's extra cap space. I have Mikhail Sergachev at. <laughs> And it sounds crazy, but I guarantee you that they'll figure out how to get a number like this. At three years, $4 million. 
I don't think he's worth that. That's just what I think he gets paid. And Anthony Sorelli at two years, $3 million. <laughs> All right, so I'll give you his... I'll, I would have given, like, Sergeyev if he's taken a bridge. I think it was at least five. But, like, Sorelli at how much did you say? Two years, $3 million. I mean, yeah, it's, that's it's, fair. I, I, it's not... It's not fair. It's not. It's Tampa Bay, but like, if, if he got paid that, that is, he should fire his agent. He, yeah. Okay, but Braden Point got six point seven five for three years. Yes. But okay, so what do you pay at three years? Let's say three years. What do you pay Anthony Sorelli? It should be at least four in the four. He's at that least. It's Anthony Sorelli. But it's Tampa Bay. He's a centerman. But it's yeah, Braden Point's a centerman. Braden Point yes. plays center instead of Steven How, Stamkos. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. How much did you give Strom again? I gave him four what? and a half. Yeah, I'm not saying it's fair. I'm just telling you it's Tampa Bay. I uh, never did uh, I say not- where my offer is fair. I can work with those numbers, yeah. Tampa okay. does something like that. All right. Um, Jake DeBrusque for uh, Boston. Again, another team that will figure some m- magic out. I have him at three years, $5 million. Because I look at what they did with Charlie McAvoy and go short term. Right? They signed him to a three-year deal. So then the next set of contracts... When I believe Bergeron will be up, Tuka Rask will then be up uh, out of a contract as well. They're going to have to sign Charlie McAvoy, and then the year after, they're going to have to sign Jake DeBrusque again. again yeah, DeBrusque. It's not fair. Get a lot of t- it's not fair. No. But it's never. Boston. Yeah. <laughs> uh- yeah, Dan, Dan, the, the Dan Mike who changes his <laughs> and username and like I'll never get over it. Um, yeah, I kind of feel it too. Um, with Jake DeBrusque, I don't know. Like maybe they're gonna give him a bridge deal. If not, I could see it at like six point five for five years if he does it, or six years. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's that's workable. Uh, a sure. real breakout player that, like, say what you want about him as a person, because there have been criticisms. Uh, Tony D'Angelo has a, had a great year for the Rangers, and this is a guy who took a show me deal and actually showed up and was a really, really good, a big part of the Rangers' success this season. Yeah. I think you have to give him a big deal. Of course you do. It's just <clears throat> what that deal is. It's the Rangers with their money, you know what I mean? We've that, talked about this before. Yeah, it's just I'm worried that you give him the deal because he's had, you look at what he's done in the past. You know, he had this was his breakout year. 53 mm-hmm. points in 68 games. Right last year, yes, he had 30 points in 61 games. But it's not 53 points. <clears throat> That's why I just I I wasn't sure how to do it like are you giving him a I thought you know do you give him a two year deal I'm like they could or you go five five years and you look at something like 5.75 or six million dollars what with him he's gonna be I think he's part of that I think what we are forgetting for some players is with the younger players they are getting paid more and it is you're paying for what you're gonna get and I think yes, if you go yes. with the well yeah, I don't think he's getting seven or anything. So I, I think between five or six is like fair for that kind of player. Um, and I mean, he's always had the offensive ability. It's just been off the ice. Now. So what do you think, um, Daniel? Daniel. Um, I don't know. Like, I'll say five point five for five years. Right. Fair yeah. enough. Um. Pierre Luc Dubois is going to get like if he gets like seven point five for five years, something along the Heischer deal, I wouldn't be surprised. Didn't he share yeah, I thought cl- he sure got seven. Seven years. Let me check. I'm gonna pull it out right now. 
Uh, I think it's like seven, like seven point two or something like that. But anyway, uh, seven like, you years, know, seven point two five. I I yeah. have him down at eight years at eight to nine million dollars. I'm yeah. hesitant to go super long because he had a very down offensive year this year. I think if you're Columbus and this, I think this guy is your number one center for the future. I really do, and I think you have to keep him long term. I just yeah, want he I does. I agree. Like, Sorry, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, I just kind of feel like who they have coming up, like they need to kind of pay this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like Kim Texier and like and Boone Jenner, and that's I think about it. Uh, okay, the big one. Uh, Matt Barzell is making at least nine point five million dollars. Yeah. Like uh, Lou didn't have any room here. I'm sorry, but like you have nothing else. I think Lou. I, I think Lou. I wouldn't be surprised if he finds a way to bargain bargain him down to at eight years to nine million dollars. But I think it's somewhere closer to ten. Yeah, I mean, God, we we've had discussions about Barzell, and man, we would just sure like to see him just off the chain go full balls to the wall offense with them. That's not gonna happen. He's yeah. such a special player, and I mean, like if if the Islanders ever got into a desperate situation in the series. I, I think then Barry Trotz would be like, hey, kid, go for it. Right. And just let him go, but they got to get into that situation. And I don't think you need to be that nuts against the Florida Panthers, so um, we'll see. Uh, but that's that's everything. That's all the UFA is the end. of. We started recording at 12. It's 3.22. <laughs> I'm not tired. Are you? This is fun. <laughs> Right, and we had um yeah we had two episodes we had lunch together it's great oh yeah all right exactly. uh, if you enjoyed this episode as I'm sure you did as you did the last one um, if you're listening to this on the YouTube first of all everyone you should be watching this on the YouTubes as the well YouTubes as on the YouTubes because I mean we got to get the YouTube going we got to get it uh, fire straight going fast all that type of stuff. But if you're on Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff, uh, give us a follow or a review, depending on what you can do on those certain sites. Um, you know, tell us what you think of our little predictions here and who you think will sign where or who's going to leave their team, stay on their team, all that type of stuff. Be sure to check out the show's Instagram channel as well as, yeah, we said the YouTube. Um, leave a comment and like on both those pages as well. Get the discussion going, people. Yep. Check out my YouTube channel for a new video about everything happens during the quarantine. Check out all three of our social medias also in the uh, description and again thank you to voice ed for giving us a platform for this podcast and we love you